हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर हिमांशु कानपाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इंग्लिश गवर्नमेंट एम एस कॉलेज फॉर वीमेन बीकानेर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ लुक एट द समरी ऑफ फाइनल सॉल्यूशंस रिटन बाय महेश दत्तानी महेश दत्तानी इज द फर्स्ट इंडियन इंग्लिश प्ले राइट टू विन द साहित्य अकेडमी अवार्ड फॉर हिज प्ले फाइनल सोल्यूशंस एंड अदर प्लेस फॉर द ईयर नाइनटीन The Sahitya Akademi Academy Award citation says the Tani's work probes tangled attitudes in contemporary India towards communal differences, consumerism, and gender. A brilliant contribution to Indian drama in English. The Tani is a theatre personality. He has experience in the art of production and staging. He seems to be quite hopeful about the future reception of his plays in his preface to collected plays that Tani wrote. I am certain that my plays are true reflections of my time, plays, uh, place and socio-economic background. I am hugely excited and curious to know what the future holds for me and my art in the new millennium in a country that has a myriad challenges to face politically, socially, artistically and culturally. Now we are going to talk about final solution a lingering tragic consequence of the erstwhile british colonial policy of divide and rule communalism or religious disharmony between hindus and muslim threatens even today to occasionally rupture the secular and non theocratic fabric of india as a nation the multilingual literature of contemporary india has not infrequently addressed this issue but it is not recently that this concern has been powerfully dramatized in a play written by mahesh dattani a playwright who writes exclusively in english for a pan indian audience in his play final solutions dattani embodies a deeply compassionate study of the feelings and sentiments of three generations of Muslims and Hindus going back in time to the partition of the Indian subcontinent by the British in 1947 the title of the tani's play ironically resonates to the pitch of hitler's final solution which planned to exterminate all the jews in europe and the world thus does the tani evoke the dark shades of religious bigotry and intolerance communal violence and mutual hatred that tear apart the people of a country act first the play final solutions open with daksha or hardika a newly married girl writing her diary on march 31st 1948 in the diary she writes about her experience in her new house she is not of good opinions regarding her in-laws though india had gained independence yet she is imprisoned within the four walls of the house so final solutions has a powerful contemporary resonance as it addresses an issue of utmost concern to our society is that the issue of communalism she um, here we are talking about daksha or hardika she had has a good taste for the songs of shamshad begum noor jahan etc she even wanted to become a singer like them but due to the family restrictions her desires remain unfulfilled she got a chance to visit a muslim girl zareen who also had a great taste for the songs of noor jahan and shamshad begum in a course of time they became friends the scene now shifts to the present in a town of gujarat and she is an old woman now an idol of hindu god is broken down there are rumors that it is broken down purposely by muslims and thus due to the tension between hindus and muslims slogans by mobs of both the communities are heard alternatively so the play moves from the partition to the present day communal rights it probes into the religious bigotry by examining the attitudes of three generations of middle class gujarati business family hardika the grandmother is obsessed with her father's murder during the partition turmoil and the betrayal by a muslim friend zareen <coughs> smita granddaughter of hardika is talking on the phone to the family of her friend tasneem as tasneem has just called and told her 
and probably her own family as well that some bomb has blasted in her hostel smita's father ramanik son of hardika takes the phone from her daughter and assures the safety of tasneem to her family and ends the call as there is quite a tension outside hardika advises her daughter in law aruna smita's mother to properly properly check doors and windows as the dogs have been let loose it means um the plunderers they are moving everywhere meanwhile javed and bobby two muslim boys are in some argument on the side of the road in a nearby area suddenly some hindu men come and start asking them questions and also search them finding a skull cap in the pocket of bobby they at once recognize them as muslims as they try to kill them javed and bobby run away and mob chases them they reach the door of Ramanik's house and start knocking at it. Ramanik at last opens the door. They at once rush in and lock the door. They plead Ramanik to save their life. Mob arrives at the door of Ramanik. They want Ramanik to either hand over Javed and Bobby to them or they will break the door and come in. However, Ramanik refuses to do so. <coughs> the mob starts throwing stones and sticks on the house and also abuses Ramanik. Aruna does not like Muslims in her house and forces her husband to throw them out. Ramanik bitterly refuses. Ramanik starts talking to Bobby and Javed. Bobby is polite while Javed is quite harsh in conversation. Ramanik asks them about their studies and upon learning that Javed is a school dropout, start talking bad about him. Smita comes and recognizes both of them. At second, Aruna asks Smita how she knows both of them. Smita tells that Javed is the brother of Tasneem and Bobby is her fiancé. When Ramanik and Aruna start insulting Smita for knowing them, Smita defends herself boldly by saying, "There's no harm in that." It is also revealed that Javed does not live with his parents. Ramanik then asks how he can meet his sister. Javed asks that unlike them the Hindus he loves the people of his community Aruna gets outraged and Javed apologizes mob throws stones at the house of Ramanik Javed scolds Ramanik saying those are your people Ramanik tries to defend himself he also tells how his grandfather was killed by muslim mob soon after the partition Ramanik offers them milk Javed being in thought explain exclaims it must feel good being majority they have full liberty to do whatever they like with them Ramanik style sympathetic explain how the conflict started there were rumors that during the rath yatra of hindus some muslims threw stones on the chariots that made the idols uh, of god to fall and break into pieces and even pujari was stabbed to death the event led to the imposition of curfew in their own in the town smita comes with the pillows for bobby and javed when she asks them to sleep on the floor as they have no extra space for them javed answers i am used to it and then and this smita start asking him his real motive behind his coming to amargaon bobby says that he has came in search for a job ramanik offers him job at his clothes shop but smita warns her father from doing so when ramanik inquires about the matter she reveals that javed was hired by a terrorist organization and was expelled from his house she also tells that she came to know about this from tasneem javed condemns her by her for betraying her friend as she promised tasneem that she will not expose the reality of javed smita acknowledges her mistake and being speechless runs away Ramanik starts asking Javed about his involvement in terrorism in a teasing manner. This is Act Three. Javed becomes furious and yells hot words. Ramanik angrily slaps Javed, and Bobby rushes to calm them down. Bobby then tells when they were young, Javed happened to touch a letter of his Hindu neighbor, who abused the former badly. Javed got angry, and after some days, threw pieces of beef meat in his house. that one came to javed's house and abused him harshly telling the story bobby adds that ramanik's community is partially responsible for makes him so because because prior to that incident javed was the hero of his locality bobby and javed decide to leave 
Ramanik, desiring to make Javed accept his job at any cost, threatens them by saying that he will call the police. Javed first bursts into the lap and then tells he was ordered to kill the Pujari in the name of Jihad. He reached the chariot and tried to stab Pujari, but the latter begged for mercy as he became still. All his passions died and he threw away the knife, but someone else took it and stabbed the Pujari to death. Ramanik is moved and calls Javed brave. Smita comes and apo apologizes for exposing him. After a while, Aruna also comes and after ensuring that it is safe to go outside, thinks of bringing water. Smita suggests taking the help of Bobby. Aruna, being strict, strict in her religious matters, condemns Smita for such a suggestion and thus both mother and daughter fall into an argument. Smita exposes Aruna's blind faiths and challenges them. Aruna, being astonished for the queer behavior of her daughter, is quite shocked. While in Kya, she goes to take bath. Smita, Bobby and Javed go out to bring water. Through their discussion, it is revealed that Smita and Bobby loved each other but due to communal problems they had to separate later bobby became the fiance of javed's sister tasneem all the three friends became frank and start cracking jokes and even throw water on each other so the play involves a lot of introspection uh, on the part of the characters and thus induces similar introspection in the readers the play becomes a reminder of the conflicts raging not only in India but in the other parts of the world. The play raises questions of secularism and pseudo-secularism. It forces us to look at ourselves in the relation to the attitudes that persist in society. It represents, it represents the conflicts of the characters. It is in a sense the psycho-physical representation of the characters and also provides the audience the visual images of the characters' conflicts. There is no stereotyped use of characterization of the chorus because communalism has no phase. It is an attitude and thus it becomes an image of the characters. This is all about the summary of the play, um, Final Solutions, written by Mahesh Dattani.